Tom, congratulations. A role recently promoted to Head of Academy Play Care and Psychology. Just talk to us a little bit about that role first and foremost, what it's about, what it entails, that kind of thing. I suppose first and foremost, um, the role is making sure that the academy creates a safe environment for the players um, and that we maximise potential both on and off the pitch. Um, so there's some, been some really good work done previously by um, previous head of coaching, Lewis Nightingale, Martin Jury, and Neil Matthews as academy manager, um, to create that safe environment but also really value the person and recognise that people development um, accelerates the, the growth of players and uh, makes our players better assets um, for the club. You've been in the role a while now, a couple of months. What's it been like full time, sort of in the, in the sort of immediate time that you've been in that role and working alongside the staff that you've mentioned there? Yeah, it's been it's been great. Um, like I said, building on some really positive work that's done been done previously, some really good work. Um, I suppose in a full time role, just giving that capacity to focus on that um, and solely on that rather than the coaching or analysis or any sort of other role. And um, the head of play care role gives you that responsibility to to really drive the development of uh, how we how we approach people development um, and play care and psychology. So, so yeah, some really good work's going. How important is it as a sort of modern day footballing environment? Obviously, a lot of focus has always been on the players and how we can develop the football side, but branching into their development as people, as you mentioned, that's really important, isn't it? And it's good that, I guess, we're putting concentration on that area as well. Yeah, completely. I mean, we, we bring the players into the academy. Um, so we have a responsibility to support them. It's a challenging environment. Um, there's no getting away from that. We've got to take responsibility for that. It's a challenging environment, academy football. Um, they'll face similar challenges that other, other kids will face in grassroots football. Um, in relation to injuries and deselection um, and dips in form. Um, but the difference is that they will tend to put a lot of pressure on themselves, they'll feel pressure from the families, um, from the coaches, and um, potentially scouts watching. Um, so it's our responsibility to support them and make sure that they, they can progress and develop in the academy. Um, but when they leave the academy, it's been a, an in, a life enriching experience and we've helped them to develop uh, and grow as people as well. And in an academy as well, particularly you look at the YDP and the PDP phases, where you've got players growing and developing and going through a very important part of their career and their life, really. We've seen the success of the academy over recent years, as recently as this week, where, again, the under-18 secured their place in the third round of the FA Youth Cup. Having that focus on them as people as well as the player side of thing and the football side of thing, I guess for those lads in particular, it's a really important period and it's good to have you and that department as a whole as a bit of a sounding board to help their development as people as well. Completely. I mean, the longer that they're in the academy, the longer it forms part of their identity as people. Um, so we want to try to create a, a wide range of identity that goes beyond just football. Um, so like I said, they can be successful in whatever they transition to next. Um, so yeah, that's absolutely our focus. And like I said, that res- having somebody that can lead on that and solely on that um, and be that sounding board to provide that confidential, uh, independent advice for them, um, I think is really valuable. Um, and the work that we do um, in the play care and psychology area and the club will, will impact the players for a long time in their lives and their academy spirit experience and will form a really big significant part of their lives um, because of their aspiration to be aspiring footballers and the amount of time they spend with us. Um, so it's really important that we take time uh, and really cautious in, and have a really solid approach in how we approach people development and support them in the journey. There's a lot of focus in the academy on the culture and that word is obviously thrown around a lot in terms of the culture throughout the whole of the academy. How much do you think this role sort of plays into that and forms a part of the culture that we're building in the academy at the minute? Yeah, well, um, I've been in the academy for three seasons. That's my fourth season. I came as an intern and I've done two years as a part-time coach. And during that time, one of the big parts of my role um, has been helping to develop that culture. Although I worked with Lewis Nightingale previously um, in introducing the culture to the academy around being brave, humble and competitive. I build on that, some great, great previous work that's gone on before that. Um, but yeah, that is our strategy in terms of people development. We believe that being brave, humble and compet- competitive will help them to, to go on and be successful in football, but also in life. Um, and just like we've got a responsibility to develop good, pe- uh, good players, we've got a, re- a responsibility to develop good people as well. You mentioned a little bit about your background and what's brought you here. Just expand on that a little bit more for us. What has brought you to this role today and, and sort of made you what you, you are at this moment in time? So I started, um, my background is in sports psychology. Um, so I've got an undergraduate in sports psychology from Loughborough University. I've got a master's in sports psychology from uh, Leeds Beckett University. Um, and I've also uh, beginning my sports psychology training route and becoming an accredited sport and exercise psychologist. I think it's really important that you've got somebody in this role 
um, that has that foundational knowledge and is going to undergoing that training so they can be really held accountable for what they do. Um, at the same time, I've got some coaching experience. I've been uh, as a part-time coach for two years in the academy, um, in the YDP, in the youth development phase. Um, so I think that experience helps me to understand what players need, um, how we should support players, but also know the, the, the challenges of, of academy football um, and what the players and families, um, the challenges that they face. And like I said, what is a pressurised environment? And we know that this role now we understand, or at least part of the role that you currently hold, is now mandatory in Category 3 academies. How do you think that reflects on the game in general and on the academy structure in a wider context? The fact that there is now focus on this, we've mentioned, you know, concentrating on developing people as well as players. The fact that that's been introduced on a kind of league-wide, academy-wide basis, Mm. it must reflect well on the game as a whole. The complete that the game is becoming more professional, but it's becoming more accountable as well. So there's a spotlight on football. Um, there's definitely a spotlight on football to make sure that every, the academies are doing everything that they should, um, and rightly so. Um, like I said, we've got a responsibility. We bring them into the environment. Um, so we've got a responsibility to, to support them and protect them and help them to grow and develop. Um, but at the same time, uh, the, the, the roles in football are growing. There's more analysts, more sports science, more sports psychology. Um, the coaches are really highly educated now. Um, but that also became, means that the players are becoming more prefer, uh, professional at an early age. So from when they join, you know, there's a, that danger that they become professional athletes at eight or nine. And we've got to make sure that we protect, support um, and help them grow as people so they can manage their pressures of academy football as well. I guess that's encouraging for you as well when you talk about the game expanding, there being more analysts, there being more sports science, there being more kind of people in your roles. To see that growing and expanding, I guess, is really encouraging for the future of academy football and the game in general. Yeah, completely. It's, it's great to see so many staff. The academy's grown. Of my last, the last three years, I've been in the academy. Um, the number of staff has grown, which is brilliant. Um, I, think, I think the success for the academy would be getting players through to the first team, um, creating great assets for the academy, for the club, um, but also it'd be seeing the players go on to become businessmen, great businessmen, um, doctors, lawyers, um, people that could potentially come and bring value back to the club as well. That would be success in our eyes. And what's the long-term kind of scope for this role, I guess, going forward into the, the coming months and the years ahead? Do you set yourself goals? Have you been set goals by, like you said, Neil and, and the, the kind of people in the academy that you report to? What is the kind of end game in terms of the next couple of years that we're looking to achieve from your role and, and obviously reflect on the players in that way? Well, yeah, we have internal discussions around what the targets that we set um, and Neil's worked, working really hard on that at the moment, this moment in time to develop those academy targets. Um, like I said, it, the most important thing for us is that we're developing good players um, that can come and, uh, and be assets to the club um, and come to the first team and provide value. Um, but at the same time, we're developing good people because we feel we've got that responsibility. But we do believe that if you develop um, holistically good players, so well-rounded individuals, they become better players and better, better assets as well. Um, so our targets as always would be to produce players that can go on and play at the highest level but have a, a great academy experience and become adaptable experts, which could help them go on and transition in whatever they want to do next.